Now, this is the part you've been waiting for, how to build the tables. Once you have completed your data model and are satisfied that it is an accurate representation of the user domain and assuming that the model is to be implemented in a relational DVMS and that includes all of the popular database management systems, the designer now has the task of defining the tables. There are three basic choices. You can build the tables for the supertypes, for the subtypes, or both, and then those can be in any combination. Notice that this allows the designer to defer where to build the tables until after the model is complete. How do we map these to tables? We said at the beginning, one of the strengths of subtyping supertyping is that you can defer where you're going to build your tables. Well, at some point, the system would like to know where the tables are. And so you have three basic choices, and we could have hybrids of those choices. Let's suppose we're given this P is the supertype, A and B are two subtypes, and I'm just taking the simplest possible case. The three possibilities are you can absorb or flatten up See how the notions, we talked about flattening up and flattening down in the context of a hierarchical structure. We're using exactly the same thing here. So we can absorb or flatten up. That means that all the attributes in all of the subtypes will be stored together in a table with the supertype. That's one possibility. And so we're seeing in this, we've got the key of the supertype, KP, We've got D, that's the distinguishing characteristic. Okay, so there'll be some characteristic, or you can think of it as kind of a code or something uh, that would be in the supertype telling you what the subtype is. And here we've got the attributes of the supertype, the additional attributes of the subtype A, and additional attributes of the subtype B. Okay, and there always have to be some additional attributes for each of the subtypes. So that's one choice. That's flattening up or absorption. And other places might call it something else. Subtypes only is flattening down, basically. And that's been called separation as well. In this case, when I flatten down, I have to take everything in the supertype and store it with the subtypes. And I'll have a, sub I'll have a table for each subtype population. So here I've got this, this the... Uh, Population of A's, okay, I've got the key of the supertype, and then I've got the supertype and the A subtype attributes, and I'll have another table for the B's. Or I could do both. I could leave a table at the supertype level as well as have a table for each of the subtypes. Now consider... Here I've got D as the distinguishing attribute. And there are different scenarios that could come up here, but let me just address a few of them. Okay, if A and B were exclusive, in other words, you can't be in both of them, do subtypes only make sense? Yeah. You would never, if you look at supertypes only, if the flattening up, if A and B were exclusive, you would never have, if you had some attributes for A, you wouldn't have anything for B. And so uh, there's no particular reason for combining them. If A and B overlapping, then you've got a real problem with the subtypes only. Right? Because the same member of a population is going to appear in both of them. What happens if it's not exhaustive on the supertype? In other words, there could be members of the supertype that aren't, aren't in any of the subtypes. What are you going to do if you pick subtypes only? You've got a problem, don't you? Because you've got no place to store the supertype that's not in any of the subtypes. These are some of the kinds of considerations that you have to go through in deciding where you're going to store your tables. And only two of these possible are possible within Norma. Uh, you can either have them absorbed into the supertype, or you can have them in, uh, only in the subtypes. The partition 
option is not one of the ones that's available within Norma. I don't know why that restriction particularly, but um, that's the way they built it. So, and the default that you'll get if you do nothing else when you generate tables, the default will be the super type level, super type only. It will absorb up or flatten up. And if you do the flattening down, then you'll, you'll, you can look at your tables and you can see popping out subtype tables. So here are uh, some of the thoughts in choosing this, uh, this strategy. I've also already talked a little bit about if, you've, if they're overlapping or exclusive, uh, if they're uh, uh, exhaustive or not. On the super type, if you've, if you've got a disjoint, then there will be a lots of nulls. And the pluses here are showing what it's an advantage for. Okay, on the subtypes, if, there's over, if they're overlapping subtypes, then you'll get some redundancy in the representation of the supertype uh, information because it will be copied as many as times as you are in the subtypes. If it's partial, then you have a problem of what do you do with the supertypes that aren't in any of the subtypes. If you store it in the subtypes and want to ask questions across all members of the supertype, you have to join together the members of the subtypes or all of the subtype populations, which could be a lengthy process. And if you uh, partition both ways, um, then you have even more joins in doing the processing. And so that's the downside is the processing speed. You might have more accuracy in your model if you uh, have le tables bo at both uh, supertypes and subtypes, but the price you pay is more joins, either joining across the subtypes or joining subtypes with the supertype. There's another consideration, and that is the relative number. Let's suppose that you had 100 attributes on the supertype, but only two or three on the subtype. You're probably not going to want to set up your tables with the subtype. You'd probably just absorb those couple of uh, additional attributes into the supertype, right? That makes sense. And the reverse is true. If most of your information is with the subtypes, then you'd want to flatten down and just pull in the information from the supertype. Now that should give you some idea of the variety of choices that you have in building the tables of a subtype supertype structure. Notice how most approaches to data modeling start with identifying entities, attributes, and relationships in the user domain. The designer is already thinking about building entity tables with columns of attributes. I call this table think. When it's done too early in the design process, it can result in serious errors in a data model. At a minimum, the designer often struggles to deal with the more complex modeling situations. The use of subtypes and supertypes can help.